This video is an introduction to acquiring focus stacked images on the advanced stereo microscope. Focus, or Z stacking, is a technique that combines multiple images of the same object taken at different focus distances. The final image has a greater depth of field than possible with normal imaging equipment. This method is commonly used to produce photos of insects, plants, and minerals. The system we are working with today is the Leica Application Suite Multifocus Module Software used in conjunction with the Leica MC170 HD camera mounted on the Leica MZ16 stereo microscope. Welcome to the Evergreen State College's Imaging Center, which is located in the basement of the Lab 1 building, room 67. Electronic keyed access to the Imaging Center will be issued to you once you have successfully completed the Advanced Stereo Microscope Workshop Series. You must schedule the use of the Imaging Center in advance through sign-up sheets or the electronic scheduling system. If you have any questions, contact the Advanced Stereo Microscope lead listed on the college's instrumentation webpage. Your electronic key card will grant you access to the outer door of the Imaging Center. Please, no food or drink inside of the lab. Because we're working with sensitive optics, it's important to wash your hands before doing microscopy work. You'll punch in a key code for access to the advanced stereo microscope room 67C. Be sure that you've brought your samples to work with. Samples that are appropriate are objects larger or thicker than a compound microscope can accommodate, but small enough to fit on the stage and under the objective lens. Liquid samples should be in a clear container, like a petri or specimen dish. Living specimens should be in a clear container from which they cannot escape. Inside of the advanced stereo microscope room, you'll see the stereo microscope setup, which includes the microscope, camera, lighting, and attached computer with two monitors. The Leica MZ16 stereo microscope is a motorized advanced dissecting microscope with a magnification range of 5 to 115 times. Before you do anything else, enter your information into the instrument log. Then turn on the computer and both monitors. Next, remove the dust cover from the instrument to reveal the stereo microscope and the camera. On the back of the microscope, flip the Z-axis motor power switch into the on position. Do the same with the small switch on the back of the camera. Do you have your samples ready to go? Place it on the stage and proceed through the following steps. Turn on the power supply for the internal transmitted light source. The intensity of the transmitted light can be adjusted by the switch on the light box. The focus and diffusion of the light can be adjusted by rotating the knob on the front right of the microscope. Next, turn on the power source for the two external fiber optic light arms. The intensity of this light can be adjusted by rotating the knob on the light box. And the focus can be adjusted by manipulating the fiber optic armatures as you see fit. On the front of the microscope, beneath the oculars, is a wheel which adjusts the opening of the iris. To maximize the resolution of your image, be sure the iris is fully open by turning the wheel all the way to the left. 
To the left and the right of the eyepieces, there are knobs that control the level of magnification. Adjust the magnification as you see fit while looking through the oculars. Finally, to the left of the instrument is a dial that controls the height of the optics above the stage. This is the Z-axis motor drive, which controls image focus. Rotating the dial counterclockwise moves the optics towards the stage. Rotating the dial clockwise moves the optics away from the stage. Pressing the black button on the drive toggles between coarse and fine focus. Before you move on to the software, take some time to adjust the light sources, Z-stack height, and magnification by looking through the eyepieces until your subject is well illuminated, in frame, and at least partially in focus. Now that you've familiarized yourself with the physical components of the instrument, let's turn to the Leica Application Suite Multifocus Module. Log on to the computer with your student ID and password. On the desktop, there are links to the Leica Application Suite and the Leica Application Suite User Manual. We won't be discussing the manual in this workshop, but it can be useful for troubleshooting. Double-click on the LAS V4.8 icon to open the Leica Application Suite. As the software starts up, you will see a dialog box labeled Init Motor Focus Position. Be sure the range of motion of the microscope Z-axis is clear, and then press OK. Once the software has loaded up, you can toggle between using one or two monitors by selecting and deselecting dual monitors under the Options menu. You should see three buttons labeled Acquire, Browse, and Process. Select the Acquire button. You will see three tabs, MZ16, Camera, and Z. Click on the MZ16 tab. The MZ16 tab allows you to adjust settings related to the optics and the Z-stack. You should see Zoom Drive, Focus Drive, Scenario, and Iris. Match the value of the Zoom Drive in the drop-down menu to your magnification on the microscope. This allows the software to render accurate measurements of your sample. If you change the magnification settings on the microscope to achieve better focus on your sample, be sure to change the level of magnification in the zoom drive. Click on the camera tab now. You should see three boxes labeled MC 170 HD, Exposure Adjust, and histogram. Look at the box labeled MC 170 HD. This box contains a series of buttons. Hovering over these buttons will indicate their purpose. In this introductory video, we will use the buttons automatic exposure, automatic white balance on whole image, and show over under exposure in the viewer. Automatic white balance on whole image is a button that you will use to adjust the white balance for your image. The color of an object is affected by the lighting conditions under which it is viewed. White balance compensates for different types of lighting to render a white object white. Make sure the magnification is at the lowest setting on the microscope for white balancing. Now carefully remove your sample from the microscope stage and set it aside momentarily. There are special white cards used to calibrate white balance available in room 67C. Take one of these cards and, without changing the Z-stack height, zoom level, or lighting, place it on the stage of the microscope. Look at the software. You may see a single off-white color on the live view. Press the automatic white balance button now. The live view should adjust to be uniformly white or gray. Now return the special card to where you found it and replace your subject on the stage. You may want to use a stock card from the collection as a background. Now choose Show Over Under Exposure in the viewer. 
Some areas on your image should turn red or blue. The overexposed or washed out regions of your image will turn red, and the underexposed or too dark regions will turn blue. Using the Z-axis motor drive, move the Z-stack through the whole focal range. Red and blue spots may appear and disappear as the camera moves in relation to the object. If the button for automatic exposure is not highlighted orange, click it now. You should now see three user adjustment sliders, brightness, saturation, and gamma. All three adjustments are crucial in producing high quality images. Brightness adjusts how light or dark the incoming image will be by changing how long the camera's aperture remains open to capture each image. At this point, increasing and decreasing the brightness will increase and decrease the prevalence of red or overexposed areas and increase and decrease the prevalence of blue or underexposed areas. Points of over and underexposure will appear as artifacts in your final image, so you should reduce them before image capture. Saturation adjusts how intense individual colors are represented in your image, with more saturated images being more colorful. Gamma adjusts the dynamic range of bright and dark portions of the image, changing the total contrast in each image. Simultaneously, adjusting the gamma will adjust the spread of brightness values. You may find that referencing the live image on the computer screen while adjusting the intensity or location of your light sources allows you to better capture your subject. Feel free to play around with any of the parameters discussed above to try and improve the quality of your final image. Once you feel that your subject is ready to be captured in an image montage, click on the Z tab. You should see two boxes labeled Define Stack and Options. In the Define Stack box, you will see a cell to the left labeled Start and to the right a cell labeled End. These two fields define the starting and ending Z stack heights at which the series of photos for your montage will be taken. Click the red arrow next to Start so that the arrow turns black. Using the Z-axis motor drive, move the focus to the very lowest point of your sample. Then keep moving slightly beyond the range of focus. Click the arrow so that the start arrow turns red again. Your start point is set. Click the arrow next to end so that arrow turns black. And using the Z-axis motor drive, move the focus point just beyond the highest point of your sample. Click the end arrow again to turn the arrow red and lock the end point in place. Now the software knows the range over which to take its series of photographs. Check Optimize Step Size box if it is not already selected. Now you have defined the start and end points for your Z-Stack and the number of sub-images the camera will take. Check Create multi-focus after stack acquire if you want to produce an image montage from your sub-images. Check save sub-images to save sub-images after the image montage is produced. The field labeled sequence name allows you to enter a file name for the final image montage. Give your image a name that's sufficient to tell what the subject is, when the image montage was taken, and who took it. Check the option Align Images Before Combining. This adds a critical pre-alignment step to the software's montage processing. Once you have all of your options set, you're ready to create an image montage. Click on the Acquire button again, then the Z tab. Move as far from the computer as you can, and then press the button on the bottom left hand of the screen labeled Acquire Multifocus. After you press this button, the software will begin adjusting the Z-Stack and collecting the sub-images. During this process, any vibrations or changes to the ambient lighting will lead to a lower quality image. For that reason, remain as still as possible 
so as to minimize your interference in those regards. Once all of the images have been taken, the software will process them into a completed image montage and save them to the current session. Once you have an image that you are happy with, make sure you save it. Images are saved to the current session folder of the local drive while you are logged in and then to the recent sessions folder on the local drive and on the instrument folder on ORCA. You can access the ORCA folder from anywhere on campus. When you have finished working, it's time to clean up. Shut down the computer and the monitors. Put away any supplies that you may have used. Remove your sample and clean the stage of the microscope. Turn off the power to the illuminators. Turn off the power to the Leica camera. Turn off the power on the Z-axis motor drive. Recover the instrument with the dust cover. Be sure to sign out of the instrument logbook. Note any issues that may have arisen during your session. Turn off the lights, close the door, and you're ready to go. Now that you've completed this training video, please complete the post video quiz on Canvas. After passing the quiz, contact the instrument lead to schedule a 15 minute hands-on review session on the instrument. After that, you'll be eligible for key access and scheduling privileges on the instrument. Congratulations. <laughs>